Cisco AAA using Cisco's Access Control Server 3.3. Well, welcome to the world of Cisco security, and I can't think of a better way to start it all off than talking about the core of the whole thing. <laughs> it's the Cisco Access Control Server. Cisco has created this server to really act as a centralized database, if you will, for all of their AAA services around the network. Now, if you've never heard of an Access Control Server, or even beyond that, maybe you haven't even heard of Cisco AAA, that's okay. We're going to go through an overview of what that's all about. As a matter of fact, that's what one of our goals are for this chapter, is going through an overview of Cisco's ACS platform and what it accomplishes to our network. We'll also get into the protocols that it uses to communicate, TACX and RADIUS. Then we'll take a brief, and I do mean brief, tour through the ACS server. The reason I emphasize that is in the second nugget of this series, we're going to go through a full-blown implementation of Cisco's ACS server, along with setting up routers and access devices, uh, pointing to the ACX, ACS server as a central point of administration. We'll then talk about the new features in ACS 3.3. This is one of the third releases, and actually beyond even that, that Cisco has come up with for the ACS server. And then finally, we'll hit the ACS hardware requirements, what it takes to run this thing. Well, anytime you come to a new product name, you have to start off by asking the question, what on earth is the Cisco Secure Access Control Server, or ACS? Well, I tried to boil it down into a statement that could be as brief and concise, but still deliver the definition, and you see it right there on your screen. Cisco Secure ACS is a single point of RADIUS or TACX AAA services for network devices. <laughs> now, it's straightforward and concise, but I guess the problem is, is you're probably seeing a bunch of terms in my straightforward and concise statement that make no sense at all. Radius, TACX, AAA, what are all these things? Well, that's actually what we're going to spend the rest of this nugget talking about is what all these new terms are as we deal in the Cisco security world. As you can see right here on the whiteboard, we have the Cisco ACS, the server sitting right here where my little... Uh, dot is floating over. Down here I have a Windows 2000 Active Directory server. Typically these are two different worlds, meaning that the people down in the Windows 2000 worlds do their thing, they don't talk to the Cisco people, they probably don't like the Cisco people is what I have usually find, and the same thing goes for the Cisco people dealing with their ACS server. Well that's what this device is meant to do, is bridge these two worlds together. The reason why is AAA stands for Authentication, Authorization, and Accounting. And if there's one thing that the Windows folks have found to do well, I, sh I shouldn't say that, that makes it sound like it's the only thing they can do well. Windows people can do plenty of stuff well, but if there's one thing that they know how to do really well, it's authentication. That's what Windows PCs do all day long. And the problem is, is here in the Cisco world, we have our routers and we have our network access servers where users might be dialing into or they might be connecting via VPN or maybe even our organization has grown large enough to where we have many different administrators that require different levels of access to these network devices. Well, we have a choice. We can go on these devices and create local user databases and say, okay, on this one I've got username Bob, username Joe, username Mike, and all these different usernames and passwords, and then go down to this one, do the same thing down here, and get, kind of get the, the password drift, and you know, there's no way to really change passwords easily. That's one way to approach it. Or, we could go over here, implement a Cisco ACS server where all of these devices point to. And they say, you know what, instead of authenticating people locally using my own local database, I'm going to check with the Cisco ACS server. Now that Cisco ACS server is specifically implemented to where it could have its own user database, or it could tie right down here to the Windows 2000 Active Directory server. And that's not the only server it can use, but that's one of the major ones. And it can jump down here and say, is that a valid username and password? It is? Sure enough, go ahead and allow them in. Truth be told, for any large organization, you need some point of centralized user management for dial-in users, for VPN users, and for administrators. That's what the Cisco ACS server is all about. 
Let's begin breaking apart that ever so concise definition into its individual components. Remember that de definition. Cisco ACS is a single point of RADIUS or TACAX AAA services for network devices. So we come to the first major piece of that, AAA services. Now I already mentioned what it stood for, authentication, authorization, and accounting. Now let's understand what each of those pieces are. The Cisco ACS server can define authentication, meaning who are you? Are you allowed to access the network? This is typically the most common one people think about because it requires that username and password. Once the user has successfully authenticated to the network, that's where the second A jumps in. Authorization. Now that you've told me who you are, what are you allowed to do? This is where we can start defining separate access privileges for separate users. This can get so detailed that we can even say, well, when somebody authenticates to the router, they are only authorized to execute these very few commands. This is a new thing. Most people are used to when you authenticate to a router, you type in your enable mode password and voila, you're in and now you can do whatever you want. But with AAA, I can say, well, you can log in, type in your username and password, you by default will automatically go to this quasi-privilege mode. But under that quasi-privilege mode, you'll only be able to execute the commands that I've told you you're able to execute. For example, maybe you have an administrator who does troubleshooting, and a lot of times we'll have to find out if, if uh, a certain interface is, is set with the correct encapsulation or check the interface statistics, so you might give that administrator the rights to change interface encapsulations and do show interface and show IP interface commands, but that's about it. And if they try to do anything else, they'll get an access denied message. That's the power of authorization. The final piece is the accounting. If authentication is who are you, authorization is what can you do, accounting is what did you do. This is all the logging that takes place to track every single service or command that somebody types in. Now I need you to expand your mind a little beyond just what we know in Cisco. These could be very well dial-in users coming in on a PPP connection to our network and we're going to do accounting to see exactly what resources they access. All right, AAA is down, back to the definition. What is Cisco Secure ACS? It is a single point of RADIUS or TACAX AAA services for network devices. So we come to the other two unknown terms, TACAX and RADIUS. Well, TACAX is all but gone. It was one of the original protocols that was released and it has been replaced primarily by TACAX Plus. Now let me define these two. TACAX and RADIUS are protocols that deliver AAA services. That's why I had to, to define AAA first. TACX and RADIUS deliver authentication, authorization, and accounting between devices. Just like we have TCP IP, and IP is a protocol to deliver data across the network, well, TACX and RADIUS deliver AAA services. The difference between them is one of them is Cisco proprietary. Cisco took the original TACAX standard, which was a very, very, well, simple standard. It was before RADIUS. It was actually uh, one of the original ways to do it. They modified it and made it proprietary, and they called it TACAX+. This one is Cisco proprietary. It is TCP-based, so it rides on top of TCP. So that's built-in acknowledgments right there. It encrypts every single packet that goes between two devices. That's one of the big benefits of using TACAX, is you can be assured if you have a network device, say a router, talking to the Cisco ACS server using TACAX Plus, every bit of communication will be encrypted between those two. And that's great, because people can't sniff and see what's going on. On the alternative, I should, I should stop right there just to say, you know, this is TACAX Plus, down here is RADIUS. RADIUS encrypts only the password attribute. Uh, so in that sense, People can sniff and find username information, find source and destination, uh, IPs, MAC addresses, the actual data in there. The only thing that's encrypted is the password. So, a little bit, a uh, little bit weaker of a protocol than TACAX Plus. And the last thing I should jump back up here: TACAX Plus provides per user or group iOS authorization, meaning that if you want to dream of doing that 
example that I gave you just a moment ago where you can have a user log in and only have a subset of commands available to them, you have to use TACX+. If you go to Cisco's website and search TACX Plus versus Radius, you will see the heralds of TACX Plus being paraded across the site. TACX rules, yay, pop the streamer, everybody runs and cheers. Because Cisco created it, of course that's what they're going to do. But with Radius, they kind of, you know, they kind of, uh, oh, by the way, there's this other one, Radius. Radius is the industry standard. You almost don't need to say anything else other than that because that is its glory. Radius is supported across the board. Now here's the beauty of this. If you're using Radius, you can authenticate devices from a router to a Windows 2000 server. Let me show you an example. If I were using Radius on all my devices, I could authenticate directly from this Windows 2000 server right here to a router. So if somebody logged in, they could say, hey, I'm XYZ person and here's my password. The router could go directly to that server because Windows 2000 and 2003, of course, support the RADIUS protocol as implemented in their Internet Authentication Service, or IAS, comes with it. You just got to install it. So that can authenticate without using the Cisco ACS server. So of course, if you're looking at Cisco's website, they're going to say, oh, TACX Plus is awesome because only Cisco ACS can implement a TACX Plus solution. Radius can go to just about any device in the world. Now, with that being said, don't let me fool you by, by seeing the heralds of Radius. Radius is very limited. You don't have the ability to do too much other than authentication and some basic accounting that's because when they developed radius they actually combined all the accounting and authorization functions together so it's definitely not as flexible as TACX and I could go down a bullet list of why TACX is better than radius but just the fact that radius is the industry standard is almost reason enough to say wow that's a pretty serious consideration the other thing that Radius does have up on TACX is the ability to do extensive accounting capabilities. TACX has limited field as to what can be delivered with the accounting. So when you're trying to document, for example, when something happens, the router can report it to the server. However, with TACX, it doesn't have as much flexibility as it would if you were using Radius. Outside of that, that's pretty much the major differences between these two protocols. In this video, we're going to see a lot of theory about the Cisco ACS server, as in the what's, the why's, the how's, but it's kind of tough to talk about all that without you guys first seeing what the Cisco ACS server looks like. So let me go ahead and just bring this up, and I just want to give you a quick tour through the Cisco Secure ACS server. Now you can see right here in the window, I am using Internet Explorer. Most of your administration will be done in a web basis. Most of it is done using Java, as you can see down here, a little applet has started. So I'm going to log in to my ACS server. And don't worry, we will go through everything on how to set this up and, and all of that. I just want to show you the end result first. But this is the Cisco Secure ACS server. It's got a very intuitive interface. Over here, you can see uh, divided into the major columns. And I'm going to expand my window and scroll around a little bit. Uh, we've got the major columns that we're working with, your user setup, group setup, and so on. I could, for instance, click on the user setup and say, I want to add a user to here and, and uh, type in the you know, username. So I can say, uh, let's add Bob. Click on add the user. And right there, you know, right on the right-hand side, you've got your help menu explaining everything about it. In the middle is all your configuration for Bob. And you can say you know, everything about Bob and then finally submit those changes. If you have any questions on anything, you have this help menu. For instance, TACAX outbound password. What is that? Scroll down. Oh, it would prove me. Oh, there it is. I was going to say it's going to prove me wrong on my first thing. Right there, outbound password explains everything about it. And you can go down through each one of these. You know, you've got the group set up explaining all the different groups, shared profile components where you can have different authorization sets. And, and don't worry, I'm, this isn't the only preview you're going to get. The second video that's part of the Cisco ACS will talk all about the config that you can do in this interface and getting the router tied in. I just wanted to show you a little bit about what this looks like. 
before we spend too much time getting into the uh, hows and what's behind it. So that's just a brief. <laughs> 